Good evening, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 111. Hope you guys all had a great start to your week and uh, excited to be back with you tonight. <clears throat> um, last week we were off on vacation, so good to be back for episode 111. Um, hard to believe we've done 110 of these already, but uh, everybody seems to enjoy them and hopefully people get a little something from them and uh, we'll continue to do them. So uh, apologize for 110 with Baloo. I know a lot of people loved that and we're looking forward to it. And I just apologize for poor audio video quality. I thought I had things worked out. And then when we clicked the live button, my phone didn't orient right and um, just wasn't great. However, um, we've got the Zoom integration into um, the software we use for Facebook Live figured out. So we'll get Blue back on to share the rest of his story and uh, some other guests moving forward. So I've got some exciting things planned for Monday Morning Quarterback here um, in the very, very near future. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, tonight we're going to cover race prep um, between races and how I look at that and some things that I make sure I do every week. Um, so... Look forward to talking about that. Um, got some travel coming up for CSI here in the next few weeks. Um, be at Kokomo for the state race this weekend, uh, quarter midget race Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then the following week, Gas City and Kokomo, USAC midget and sprint double header. Looking forward to that. And Pit Logic is uh, sponsoring the uh, best mechanic of those four races. Uh, winner of that will get a tablet. Uh, with Pit Logic, so excited to do that with Tim Clausen and the Driven to Save Live folks um, who are putting on that double. Um, that should be some great racing. And then the following week, we're going to Little Rock for the Short Track Nationals, <clears throat> another one that uh, we haven't been to in a few years. So looking forward to getting back to Little Rock and working with some of our wing customers. So end of the year plans are a little up in the air. Not certain if there's going to be a West Coast swing with USAC. Um, really want to go to the Winter Nationals uh, that we do every year in Vegas. Love seeing all of our West Coast quarter midget customers. Um, this will be the only time we get to see them this year with, with all the other stuff going on. So hoping all that stuff happens. Um, PRI just got canceled tonight, so that's another one where we don't get to see some customers. So we have some, I kind of thought that was going to happen, so we've had some things in the works Um to do some live videos that week and product releases and, and stuff like that. So um, you'll see a, a virtual type trade show uh, from CSI that week instead of meeting and greeting all of you at PRI and having nice dinners and all the fun stuff we normally have. So we are, um, before I jump into our topic, one thing, we're working on a new website for CSI. Um, we like to keep our website fresh and... Um, make buying options easier, make customizing shock packages easier. And uh, so um, we're putting a lot of effort into that where you can really customize your shock package um, right there on the web store. And uh, so anyhow, with all that being said, we are in need of some high res images. So if you want to potentially be featured on our website, email me high res images, um, action shots, working on your car, uh, racetrack shots, any of that, um, we're going to have um, a need for a bunch of those here in the next few weeks. So you can just email those to me, um, garrett at csishocks.com, and uh, if we use one of your images, we'll send you some swag. So, uh, Alex, do I think Chili Bowl is going to happen? Um, I think it's going to be difficult uh, for them to pull that off, just being that it's indoor. Obviously, we hope shootout and the Chili Bowl happens, um, but I don't know how they're going to pull that off and what the what the liability of that looks like. Um, I think a lot of people are scared after Knoxville, and that was an outdoor event. Um, so, yeah, I don't know about Chili Bowl and the shootout. Um it's really crazy. I don't, I don't want to get into a whole political thing here, but I think most people realize that the disease isn't deadly, and uh, the fact that they just keep canceling stuff 
uh, I shouldn't say it's not deadly, but it's not as deadly as we once thought or early on we didn't know exactly what it was or how bad it was going to be, but um, it seems... It seems they keep doing restrictions, so I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, Rick, Texas, question mark. At this point, we don't plan on Texas. Um, I hope it's a fantastic event for you guys. Uh, I really do. Um, I just don't know how many cars are going to go, and that's an expensive race for us to, to travel that far if there's not going to be a really large car count to warrant the, uh, the big expense of going out there. Um, if they cancel the winter nationals, we will go to Texas, but at this point we're hopeful winter nationals is going to happen. And, um, and so we plan to do winter nationals instead of Texas, but hope that race is awesome for you guys. If there's anything we can do to help, um, definitely let us know. Um, so, all right, without, uh, any more BSN, we will jump into tonight's topic, which is um, prep between races. So I created this uh, just little slide with a checklist, and I will talk through that um, and what I mean. A lot of the bullet points on there seem really simple, but I'll go into detail on that. Uh, as I'm talking, if you have a question, feel free to uh, type it in there. I will look and see... Uh, if I see your question, I'll answer it then, or I'll go back and answer them at the end. So most of us have part-time help or voluntary crew help. And so teams that I worked on when I was younger, some of them had like a designated work night. We worked on the cars on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or we worked on the car every Monday night. Um, so if you don't have a designated work night, when you leave the track and your help is there, um, have a game plan. You, at that point, when you're closing the trailer door for the night, um, if it's your last race for the weekend, you know what condition your equipment is in from the weekend and make sure you allow yourself adequate time and just communicate with everybody right then. Hey, we're going to work on the car Monday this week instead of Tuesday because, um, we think this might be hurt. We need to get it apart and see if we need to order parts. You want to allow yourself as much time as possible to get stuff ordered early in the week. That way you don't get into rush shipping. Um, all of those things add up and eat at your budget at the end of the season. So make sure that you allow adequate time. If you're racing again the next day, let those guys know, hey, we're meeting at the shop at 9 a.m. Or if you're at a hotel, we're getting downstairs at whatever time and we're going to get this stuff knocked out. Uh, I'm a morning person. I like to start earlier rather than later because let's do it before it gets too hot out. Um, the next thing on there is clean, clean, clean. And that seems very, very simple. However, nine times out of 10, when I'm cleaning my race cars, that's where I will find issues that maybe prevented us from having a good finish or something that's going to potentially create a DNF in the coming weeks. So don't just go through the motions and blast everything with a pressure washer. Get in there, scrub the thing. Um, your hands and eyes are going to be in nooks and crannies and parts of that race car that they're not normally throughout a race night. So get in there, clean the thing very well. It'll make working on the car much easier and nicer because everything's very clean. But at that point, you're going to potentially see if you have uh, a crack in the chassis, a bolt backing out somewhere, maybe um, a body panel's rubbed on a, a fuel line or an oil line, and, and you'll, you'll be able to identify a lot of those things when you're in there cleaning the car very thoroughly. So do a good job cleaning. Your next step is going to be your weekly maintenance, and it's vital to have a checklist that you do every single week, um, get in a routine. If you do have some help, Make sure those guys do the same job each week. Um, they'll get in a routine. They'll get more efficient at it. They'll do a better job. And if the same guy's cleaning the torque ball uh, each week, he'll notice if all of a sudden there's more slop in the torque ball or, hey, yeah, the threads are kind of starting to get a little funky here in the housing and we're going to need to put a helicoil in there or something. So all of that is very, very important. 
Um, great checklist features on PitLogic if you're a PitLogic user and multiple people can check off on that. Um, so that, that's very, very good. My next thing, do your research. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is if you're going to the same track you race every week or you're going to a place you don't race very often, look back at notes, talk to people that race there, and make the most educated decision you can on your setup for that week. Okay, don't just say, eh, we're going to throw this setup on it, that should be close. Do as much research as you can during the week when you have the time and the resources to look at everything and come up with a good game plan for what setup you're going to put on the car and be confident when you put that setup on the car. The next thing is to have a load list. So throughout the week, um, as you're taking stuff out of the trailer, write that down to make sure it gets back in the trailer. If you notice, hey, I'm getting low on paper towels in the trailer, or I'm low on this or low on that. Have that load list so when you get into a thrash on Thursday night or the last night that you guys normally load, you don't overlook and forget that that stuff. Um, again, there's checklists and pit logic for all of those. Um, all these things are just going to make your experience at the racetrack, which is where we have fun. We spend all of this money and time to go to the racetrack and be successful and have a good time. And if you are more organized and do all these steps during the week, you're going to have a much more enjoyable experience at the track. And the last thing is just to leave the shop fully prepared. And if you do all of those things each week, you are going to be fully prepared. Your trailer is going to be stocked. Your race car is going to be clean with a good setup on it. You're not going to have failures um, that could have been prevented because you didn't see something. Um, and it all starts with the very first item on there, which was to have a game plan when you leave the track. And that game plan needs to take into account what condition the car is when you close the trailer door and how much time are you going to need throughout the week to get it done. Um, you know, tonight I was that way. I'm traveling to California tomorrow um, for CSI, and I'm going to be out there for a couple days. And so normally my dad and I work on Hudson's car on Tuesday nights. So I said, okay, uh, I've got to jam home after work. I got home at 6.30. I worked in the shop till 8.30 and got a bunch of stuff done and then came back here to do this. So we changed up our game plan. When we left Terre Haute yesterday, I said, I'm going to get everything unloaded, get the trailer clean, get the car ready, um, shocks off of it so my dad can dyno them tomorrow. And, uh, and then when I get back from California, we'll button everything up. But we had to change our plan. But we had a game plan when we left the track last night. So all of that is very, very important um, to, to do. So anybody have questions on that um specific weekly race prep questions um or tech questions and i think uh for quarter midget people that are watching i believe in pit logic i'm gonna look while we're here i'm pretty certain in the downloads um i have my quarter midget maintenance template let's see checklist yeah so in pit logic i have um the whole checklist that I use each week for quarter midget and you can check it off in there in the, the, um, the notes, you can create other load lists, um, and et cetera. But my quarter midget list is in there and I think we might, I think crumbs put their 600 checklist in there for those guys. So if there's enough interest, I have, I'm a big note guy because I will get for be forgetful. I carry a notebook around in the shop with me when I talk to customers on the phone and I create notes and I go back and check them off and make sure that I, uh, I replied to everybody I needed to reply to. And uh, so I'm a big notes guy. So I have a very detailed checklist that I can pull out for midgets and sprint cars too. And, and we can get that on, on uh, pit logic as well for, for pit logic users. So anybody have any questions? We're working, uh, we're working on some new apparel. We have some new hats coming, some new trucker style hats. 
uh, gray and black, a gray and blue, pink and black for the ladies, and a camo um, with, a, with a cool CSI patch on it. And uh, we're also working on some new sweatshirts for fall. So those things will be coming soon. And they will, um, hopefully our new website will be done by then. I'm really excited about the customization of shock packages on there. So now on our website, we have level one, two, three. We'll still have that, but then you'll be able to customize those packages uh, to fit your needs, whether you want to add cables or add a bump rubber cup, what kind of bump rubber you want to add. You want to add shock covers, what kind of shock covers, kind of all the way down so you can have a really customized shock package for one discounted price. So Josh Walker, need to take heat out of right front and add heat to right rear. Uh, Josh is a quarter midget guy. And so um, there's a couple things you can do there. Josh, uh, one, uh, adding rear weight percentage will help if you can do that. Uh, two, if you raise the front pan hard to um, not load the right front as, as hard, that will help. Um, those are the two things I would try first. Um, then it would be spacing the right front out farther. So whether you shift your front axle to the right a little bit farther, all of those things will load the right front less and then um, in turn it'll load the right rear more um, i've been battling the same thing a little bit um, hudson's current cars are really really short wheelbase car um, jeremy built i think he only built a couple one for his little guy and then he built this for hudson when he was two and um, i never intended to really race it in a class as fast as junior honda but it just happened and um, since the wheelbase is so short, we, we struggle to stick the right rear sometimes on low grip tracks. And those are things I've done to help. Um, and you can tell when you go to scrape the tires, the, the right front looks like it's been through a war and the right rear is untouched. But doing those couple things definitely, definitely helps. So. Mark Ashcraft, uh, on a bumpy pavement track, we raised some ride height and up on spring rate. That kept it off the frame, but still bouncy. Um, so going up on spring rate will make it bounce more. Softer spring rate will help it get through the holes better. Um, a little bit <clears throat> of a hard question to answer without seeing it, but my general rule has been I'm not going to tune for one or two bumps on the track um, that amount to 5 or 10% of the track, and then sacrifice on the other 95, 90 to 95% of the track. Um, so if there's a couple bumps, unless they're really upsetting the car to the fact that it's going to spin out or really slow it down, typically I don't tune for those, but softer springs will help you get through um, bumps for sure. Matthew, hope you enjoyed Terre Haute and hope we'll bring Hudson down and run again. Um, yeah, absolutely. Love Terre Haute. Awesome track. Um, and a great facility, um, good, really good people. So we'll definitely be down anytime you guys are running pavement. And um, once I get him a little, little better on pavement, we'll come run the dirt because he wants to run the dirt. So Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie, speaking from a lot of experience, um, but yeah, cleaning the car is is a uh, super important. It's a lot of people I see, you know, they go to the car wash and they're just blowing the thing off really quick. And I understand it's late, um, if you're doing it after the races, whatever, but that's really where you can identify a lot of issues. So yeah, Dave, um, five P's prior preparation prevents poor performance. And, um, and that's super important. I've said it once. I'll say it a million times. There's absolutely no shortcuts in racing. The people who put the effort in typically have the best results. So, um, for sure. Anybody else have any questions uh, tonight, Monday Morning Quarterback, episode 111? Football's on, football's back. Ronnie's fantasy team's trying to come back and make a big upset on me after I dominated him all day yesterday in the CSI Fantasy League. But my Saints won, so hard to wipe a smile off my face today, especially when they beat Tom Brady and the Bucks. Joe Buck said yesterday that the Bucks were going to the Super Bowl. Psh, come on, man. Road goes through New Orleans in the NFC. Um, 
Eric Long. Going to try 11 just for me. So all the quarter midget people on here tell Eric Long he's crazy for running his right rear all the way at the end of the axle and then wonders why he has no grip. Get that right rear in there. Make it work. Make it work. The birdcage is in that far so you can get the right rear in that far. Not so you can stick it out at the edge of the axle. Uh, Nick, what are typical shock velocities in quarter midget cars? Um, so we've ran data acquisition at a couple different places. No, we haven't really ran it at like a place like Toledo that's like super fast and bumpy. Um, but we saw spikes over 13 inches per second. Um, but those are just split second spikes. Um, the average or the mean velocity around the track, um, depending on the corner was typically three to four inches per second um, at the couple tracks we tried it. So not un really uncommon or that much different than um, a pavement midget or sprint car, honestly, really similar velocities. Now, if your setup isn't good or you're undersprung, I'm sure you'll see bigger spikes. Um, heavier kids, you'll probably see bigger spikes. We, we were doing it with a, at that time, probably 70 pound driver in light classes, so. Ronnie, Yahoo does not think you're going 13-0 and in our league. <laughs> 0 and 13, maybe. You got as good a chance as going 13-0 and as T-Bone's Cowboys do of winning out. Uh, anybody else have any questions before we bore you with football talk? Nobody? Nobody? No takers? All right. Well, if you ask a question after the fact, I try to go back and answer, and you can always uh, DM me on Facebook or message me um, on my email, and I'm more than happy to answer those. Uh, real quick, Evan, who did you say put together the 600 checklist? It seems borderline excessive. Um, that would be Mr. Kevin Crum, and they probably are borderline excessive, but they, uh, they have a very top flight team. And if Kevin's still watching, he could probably comment whether he thinks everything on the list is a necessity. I'll be honest, I haven't went through the whole list. Um, I'm probably seven or eight years away from owning a micro. My little guy just turned six, maybe six years away from owning a micro. Again, I raced micros as a kid. Um, but if you saw my quarter midget checklist on there, you'd probably say that's excessive. But, you know, uh, I don't like to spend the time and the money I do at the racetrack on the weekends and, and have a parts failure or, or something like that. So I really do do everything on there. And I'm sure if Kevin comments, he'll probably say he does everything on there too. So, uh, Alex, you recommend blocking the car in the trailer while traveling far distances or any distances. Um, it, with a sprint car, uh, or a micro on torsion bars, I do like to put something under, um, it, not so much for the shocks, but more for the torsion bars. Um, the torsion bars probably get a bigger workout going up and down the road than they do uh, on the race car. So I do like to put a block under under it um, for the torsion bars. Uh, coil springs are a little more robust, but um, but yeah. There you go. They do it all every week. Kevin, how much time do you estimate it takes you to go through that checklist? I know on my quarter midget, if nothing is, um, nothing's like totally destroyed, it's probably two, two to three hours on the car and then maybe another hour on the tires each week per car. Uh, Jesse, where can I find the quarter midget ride height gauge? Boomerang Racing. They should give me royalties. Boomerang Racing. Um, if you search them on Google, uh, I believe they're out in California. They make that handy little ride height tool, and they're super cheap. I think I have like three or four of them floating around. I leave some in the trailer. I think they're like seven or eight bucks a piece. All right. Well, we hope you guys have a fantastic week. Again, thank you for all the questions. We will keep them coming. Um, and we do have some 
guests we plan to have now that we have that all integrated. And um, if you have any topics or people you want to see on here or anything like that, always let us know because uh, it helps make the show better. Um, so again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and hope to see you at a track soon.